Hello, and welcome back to The Art of Reduction here at Trailway Studios. My name is Reeve Andrews, and I'm going to be your barber today. Today we have a fun episode. We will not be cutting any hair, though we're going to focus on why having a mobile barber shop is so nice for your business or just personal needs. We'll be going over my build of the, of the truck, and more importantly, the pros and cons of having a mobile shop, maybe even compared to a brick and mortar, or just being rogue and cutting hair in people's houses. So if you could, please follow me as we go on a little field trip to check out my mobile barber shop, The Bent Truck. Please come follow me. So in 2005 is when I started my career in barbering. In 2012 is when I started my brick and mortar barber shop called Bent in Bloomington, Indiana. In 2018 is when we came up with the idea to start a mobile barber shop. 2020 came along and changed the whole world as we know it with COVID and making to be a mobile barber just as important as to being a great barber inside of a local shop or shop. Today I would like to show you some of the things of our build that we find very important to have if you ever decide to go on and start a mobile barber shop of your own. Is it better than a brick and mortar? I'm gonna say no. Is it worse than a brick and mortar? I'm gonna say no. It's really up to you as a barber, as an individual, as an entrepreneur, to decide on what avenue to take. For me, I feel like there's a couple you could take. You could own a brick and mortar, you could own a mobile barber shop, or you can just kind of go house to house carrying a, a case like most barbers do today. So here on this episode of Art of Reduction, we're gonna break down the pros and cons of having a mobile barber shop and some of the things that we've done to our mobile barber shop that we think you should do to yours. Come with me. So while on a fishing trip with some buddies, the idea of the mobile barber shop came to life. At the moment, we were unsure of how we would do it, what we would do, or anything of the idea of a mobile shop. So I told my drunk buddy, who was really pushing the subject of us trying to create one, if he found a truck, I would buy it. Welcome to the Bent Truck. It started out in 1995 as an ice cream truck, and in the late 2000s, it was bought by some Purdue alumni to create it into a tailgate vehicle, and that's when we bought it, is from them. It's a 1995 Grumman Olsen sitting on a Chevy, a Chevy engine and drivetrain. Um, what we like about the truck is that it's not too big. It's on a, just a 3500 chassis, so I could park it in almost any parking spot I need to. I could get it into a tight area, such as where we are right now. And more importantly, it's just not a trailer either. So it's, it's one and done. There, I could drive it, it's the shop. It's amazing. So I couldn't be more impressed on just the size of the truck and just the classic look of it. Though with buying an older vehicle, there's a lot of things that we had to do to it. It needed a new engine, it needed a new transmission, it needed the interior, needed new wheels, new brakes. A lot of money went into making this old truck what it is today. So my first bit of advice is buy a newer truck if you would like. It will just help you with a lot of the cost with the engine and transmission and stuff like that that might suck up a lot of your money to create something like this. Though for old school looks, get yourself a nice old truck and spend the money on refurbishing it and restoring it. So let me go around and tell you some of the things that we added to the truck that we think is just really cool. Number one, we have a clean tank and a gray tank underneath both 35 gallons of water. On average, a client during a shampoo goes about a half gallon or half a gallon of water per shampoo. So with a 35 gallon tank, we could get a lot of shampoos done throughout the course of that tank's life. And, and more importantly, it's, we don't emptying it right into the nature. We have a gray tank, so we could take the dirty water and transport it where it needs to go. A couple of things. How do we get power to the truck? You have blow dryers, you have AC units, you have lights. A lot of power goes into the truck. So we have three different options on this truck and I encourage you to kind of look into the different options as well. Number one, you can't see it, but on top we have some solar panels. That will, and we have a battery bank here inside the truck 
that the solar panel charges the battery and runs some of the smaller things, not your blow dryers, not your AC units, but the water pump, some of the lights, some of the just the, 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 the small things that make it nice to, to be in the truck and without using a generator or plugged into power. That's our first option. Our number two option is being plugged into Shoreline. Just like with any RV, I could go to an RV park that has a big 210 outlet. I could plug this bad boy right in and it's almost like we're in a house at that point. That runs the AC unit, that runs the lights, that runs both blow dryers, TV, stereo, all day, every day. So if you could hook it up to an RV line like this, I definitely encourage you to do so. Now our third option is this bad boy right here, our Honda generator. This thing is quiet, it's efficient, and it has enough power to run everything. We did the math and we came up with the 7,000 watt generator is perfect for a two station barber shop. You could probably get by with a 3,500 watt generator, though just to play it safe, I would recommend a 7,000 watt Honda generator. We had a 10,000 watt generator, but it was way too loud and big, and it was just too much. So you do not need a 10,000 watt generator, unless you want to. Um, so I really encourage around a 7,000 watt generator to really get the job done. And more importantly, Honda is the ticket when it comes to generators. So come with me. So when we bought the truck, we wanted to either get it painted or we wanted to get it wrapped just for the marketing and the look of the truck. Um, unfortunately, when we got it, whatever kind of paint they used to paint it before had to get either sandblasted or soda blasted off of the original metal of the truck. Um, unfortunately, it couldn't. the cheapest option is to get sandblasted. Unfortunately, this is 100% aluminum. The whole body of the truck is aluminum. Imagine the DeLorean and Back to the Future. So when we realized we couldn't get it sandblasted and that we had to get the whole truck soda blasted just so we could either put a wrap on the truck or get the, the truck painted, it cost us like $5,000 just to get down to the bare metal of the truck just for the artist or painter or wrap artist to come in and wrap or paint the truck. I love old school stuff. So once we got it soda blasted and spent all that money, which again, we were kind of just dumb entrepreneurs at the time, kind of bankrolling this ourselves. Um, it came, it, once it got down to the pure aluminum of the truck, we absolutely fell in love with it. And so what you're seeing here, this silver that you see, that's not paint, that's not a wrap. This is actually the original metal of the truck. And we had an airbrush artist named Larry Webb out of Nashville, Indiana, Webb Restorations. He came out of retirement, he's 70 years old, to airbrush this truck. So every, all the artwork you see, the barber poles, the, the copper you know, molding of the truck, all this is airbrushed. And he went in and just patinaed all the little accents to make it look more, uh, more kind of old school and kind of rat rotty, which I think it just turned out absolutely beautiful. Um, number one with the mobile barbershop that I think is the biggest plus for you, your business, everything is the marketing that the truck gets. So having a nice logo, your website, you know, is, is very important for just to get your money and value out of the truck. Like I said, you know, what is the pros and cons of having a truck compared to maybe having a brick and mortar? We have a lot of money invested in this truck, which a lot of people could just have used this money to start a brick and mortar, correct? So let me break it down to you. Just the, the setup and set down of the truck, the traveling part of the truck, yes, it's making you money because it's marketing for you, though it's just not as, as structured and like, like a, a brick and mortar, it, it's there. It's not going anywhere. People know where it's at. You know, they get comfortable going to the same place every single time. That has a lot of value to it. Though, being able to go to some higher end clients who are willing to pay a little bit more just so you're, you're saving them time by going to them, they don't have to leave their house, adds value to the service and adds value to, to your haircuts. So there is some, some plus and, and rewards, but the fact that we have to drive maybe 30 minutes or an hour to our next client, you know, and set the truck up, cut the hair, clean the truck up, break it down, 
drive another 30 minutes to the next guy. You know, there's, there's, there's some, there's some, you're losing some money with the time that it takes to get to places. So that's why your, your service in the truck has to be very high compared to maybe a, like a price point at a brick and mortar that you could just turn and burn a bunch of clients. So there's a lot of options to a business plan for the truck, right? So you can maybe go to a couple high-end clients, you know, who are spread out around your community, or more important, maybe we could find a more of a cluster of people that we could go cut their hair all at once. Fraternities, weddings, um, big businesses, parties. So that's what I started out with first, was going to these four. Started doing weddings out of the truck, started going to fraternities out of the truck, started going to big corporations where there's 3,000, 4,000 people on campus cutting hair for the corporation, and going to parties. You know, people throwing big parties, events, going there, cutting a bunch of hair. There's a bunch of people there waiting for me. It almost made it more like having a brick, uh, brick and mortar than having to drive around all over the place to find clients. So I would encourage you, if you do go with the mobile truck, to have some of these options of more people per area to cut instead of having to travel everywhere. A good quote is, be a magnet, not a satellite. Draw people to you, and you don't always have to go out to people. Though COVID did change that, you know, with the with people being scared of going out in public and being around other people, they wanted they wanted that service to come to them. So this really helped my business out, being able to go to those people who are willing to pay the high dollar haircut price, um, and and not have to go to a brick and mortar. So you waited long enough. Let's go check out the inside. Come with me. So one of the most important aspects we wanted of the barber truck is we wanted it to really feel like a salon or a shop once you got in the truck. We wanted people to, to really have a mind-blowing experience just seeing a truck and all of a sudden walking into a barber shop. And I think that's one thing we were able to create here. We have AC units and heaters for cold and warmer days. Though with any type of RV, there is a threshold of temperature. If it's too hot, high 90s. If it's too cold, the teens. This unit is hard to run the truck. So again, that's why a brick and mortar is nice because it's 24 seven. It's not going anywhere. Weather doesn't matter. You could go get a haircut out of a brick and mortar shop. With us here in Indiana, temperature changes crazy. So there is, it's more of like a three season truck. Spring, summer, fall. So just knowing that, there's some reasons that it's nice to have a brick and mortar, but it's also cool to have a nice AC unit and heater so we could run most of the year in the truck. We wanted to have all the, all the necessities that a, mo a barber shop has. We have running water, we have two sinks, two stations, and two chairs. One thing we really wanted and, and bought for, for space was to have two chairs. I think one barber chair in a truck is cool. Having two of them makes it a business. You are able to, as the owner of the truck, have someone to help you, they can make some money for you and the truck, really makes the dollars go up having two stations in your vehicle. So I encourage you, if you do start a mobile truck, just get a little bit bigger one so we could fit two stations in it. A couple things that we love about it is that we have TVs in the truck. There's great lighting in the truck, which I love. And like right now, we don't, we're not connected to Shoreline. We're not connected to the generator. All this right here is ran off our um, solar panel on the roof. Um, we just love the way this truck turned out. It's comforting. It's, it's peaceful in here. We could turn up with all kinds of music, has speakers throughout the whole truck. And more importantly, like I said, we wanted to be able to be a full-fledged barber shop in the truck. So having a hot towels to do hot shaves here for weddings and events um, and tinted out windows, limousine tint so they can't see us in during the day. And just the overall look of the truck, I just find just beautiful and just with the wood and metal. I can't thank Alexander RV and Trailer who helped design the inside of the truck. I thought they went above and beyond. And what you're looking at is a truck that's five years old. We've been using this truck as is for five years. Um, some people we've cut, we've cut Larry Bird's hair in this truck and many other high profile clients, which I'm very proud to be able to do. And again, like I said, being mobile and being able to go to these higher profile clients 
is a, is a thing. So instead of just me bringing my case into cutting hair in their kitchen or in their garage, they get to walk right out into a full fledged shop that they get to feel like they're getting a full experience and they're going to pay a lot more money. That's what it's all about. It's about upping your service so you can make more money. And that's what we're all about here at Bent is giving a great service and making good money. And I just can't thank you guys enough for watching so many videos. And I just hope that this inspires you to think outside the box, even though we're just, we're in a big box, which is, I think is funny though. Just knowing a couple things, a brick and mortar, very important to have a mobile barber shop, not as important, but if you could pull it off and you can do it, it's phenomenal. The number one thing that this whole truck gets me is marketing. I don't have to cut a single head of hair in this truck at all. I just have to drive it around my town every once in a while, park it here, park it there. And for some reason, people just assume I'm doing something really cool in the truck, even though I'm just driving it and showing it off. So if you already have a brick and mortar shop to pair it with a mobile shop, it's just the marketing aspect that you get for your brick and mortar shop that really, really helps out the cause. So I can't thank you guys enough for watching this episode of Art of Reduction. We cannot wait to bring you more content. Please like, please follow, and just keep cutting great hair. Thank you so much.